Welcome to your town. I'm Chef Wendy Brody, Art of Food, and my guest today is none other than the well-known Mary Alice Cerrito Fettis, dear friend, dedicated community leader, and chair of Whale Fest Monterey. Welcome, dear friend. Thank you, Wendy, <laughs> for having me. She is so professional and so dedicated is truly the right word. And she's a type of person that would give you her sofa. <laughs> 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 and the shirt off his back. And anyway, you have done so many other things besides food, but we first met through the food industry. And so there is so much more to your career than food, but we'll need to touch a little bit on that, especially with your Italian background, your wharf history, family history, the Cerritos, the famous restaurant. Um, it's now Scales, right? That's right. Yes, That's right. yes. Uh, but anyway, I'll let you get started with a little bit of background about your your growing up local girl, Santa Catalina, and right. carry on. Right. Take it away. <laughs> well, um, I was born and raised in Monterey. Uh, as you said, I went to Santa Catalina School. I graduated from Santa Clara uh, with a BA and a master's in teaching, and went on to become a flight attendant. And I flew internationally uh, for about five years, and it was a charter carrier, so we went wherever we were uh, paid to go, which was uh, could have been uh, taking Mos Muslims from Nigeria to uh, Saudi Arabia, or uh, priests to Rome, or the army to um, various spots on the globe. Um, I, currently, I'm thinking of Frankfurt, Germany. We worked Vietnam evacuation, uh, and uh, anyway, we had a variety of, of trips to uh, Brazil, to Tahiti, um, all over Europe and Japan and, and, uh, and Asia. You know, I never realized, I, I, I thought you were, I didn't know you did chartering and such specialized ones right. because you were still doing a little of that, I think, when I met you. Uh -huh. And um, but now learning that side of it, you must have had some interesting oh, food, food experiences it, related. No, oh. Any that pop up and come Absolutely. to mind? Absolutely. Um, now and then, I think of uh, of a specific meal I had in Turkey, uh, which was the olive oil and the fish. They were just remarkable and not reproducible anywhere else as as we now call it the the terra of of the the location you know what was it that made that particular olive oil the soil there what what was that fish eating yes. that made just it just uh, a a special moment and it wasn't even a a, a special restaurant and so uh, we had Ca a, a captain who loved to um, treat the uh, whole crew. So I remember getting into Spain and he had called from the uh, airplane in advance, which is was something you really couldn't do then, but he did. And uh, <laughs> we were in Tormolinos and he, he arranged for an entire meal and that was the first time something that would be very common to the old fishermen of Monterey, but the little tiny fried fish where you eat, you pop the whole thing in your mouth like a like a French fry, like whiting. Yes, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And um, oh, and then one time we totally lost Thanksgiving because we were working, and so then the next day he he bought everyone four pound lobsters, wow. and that was that was in Maine. And that was, you know, we thought we were going to have, you know, the traditional Thanksgiving meal, and then everything was closed up by the time we got there, and we were all depressed and sad. And um, Thanksgiving in Kano, Nigeria, was we had turkey, but it was not, it was not great. <laughs> it was because I don't know, some of us were just anyway. Um, Brazil, I remember 
you know, I mean, we have them now, but they weren't common then. Yeah. You know, those little tiny uh, limes that they call lemons. Oh, right. Well, um, Lem limon or uh, yes, but, yes, but they I know were what not you a mean. common. They you can get these things. Key lime, like, like, key, like, like a key lime, lime, but they they weren't. That's they were much sweeter. Yes, and so to have that on fish was really good. And, oh. I never had Kobe beef. I got into Japan all the time, and I just, that's just too expensive. In the mid-70s, $10 to yes. pay for a, a steak was outrageous. I mean, I don't know, a steak was probably $2 then, uh -huh. or something like that, you know. And, 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 ah, no, not on my pay. And, um, <laughs> oh, you know, the in, in Anchorage, the um, having um, halibut cooked on alder wood is just a phenomenal mm. experience. Those I'm are just my realized. cabinets, alder wood. I, I'll have to see if there's <laughs> any burn left them up. <laughs> <laughs> Start cooking on them. Um, I mean, it's funny, I, I'm just realizing all these things are fish, but that was, oh, goulash in uh, in Frankfurt. Loved, loved the goulash. Oh, boy, yes. And, you know, sometimes we'd been up for 24 hours, and I remember just parking my head on the back of a, of a, a wall or whatever and just falling asleep until the food got there. I mean, you know, we would go go to work maybe at 10 or 11 at night or something like that and, and, and work. I don't know, maybe from the East Coast to someplace in, in Europe, and it would, you know. Anyway, I was Amazing. tired. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was always a going time. And then my father got ill, and um, I had to come home and operate on Neptune's table, and that was a, a very interesting time because we had time-honored menus that we needed to, um, to uh teach each chef who came along yes. and so then I was in the teaching capacity uh, which was where my degree was and uh, so it was you know difficult to um, honor someone's ego and their creativity and say you're going to make this dish this way and so um, and I came up with some new ideas I had one that was called seafood Andalus and what it was meant to do was to take any any item in in our inventory that let's say um, that let, let's say it had a shelf life uh -huh. of three days uh -huh. so that on the second day is when you wanted to make sure that it got eaten. Mm -hmm. And so a, a lot of things went into it. And what, basically what it was was a poor man's paella. And Great. so a lot of we were able to put whatever we wanted in there. And, and it, so it was shell, shellfish and fish, and, and it was absolutely delicious, and saffron and peas and anyway. And, it was well, that really is chef's training because yeah. we're supposed to be able to go into the walk-in or the it, refrigerator exactly. and create something to utilize things before they perish exactly. and, and not waste. Um, right. And during that time, I was president of what was called... It's now the Monterey County Hospitality Association, but it was the I was president of the Monterey Hotel and Restaurant Association, mm -hmm. and then I went to work with you, and uh, one more time telling chefs uh, how they had to prepare things, and <laughs> we, we did have fun. That we was did have a lot of fun, fun. and that was uh, of all it, things a diet food. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but how to make it absolutely delicious and, and beautiful. Uh, exactly. Yes. And how to yeah. cook without olive oil. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> that was sacrilegious. Um, and, uh, yeah, that was, we had anywhere from groups from 25 to 3,000, I yes. remember. And uh, and uh, didn't we always remember the exception, somebody who oh, had an intolerance to absolutely. this or an allergy uh, to this? And, well, what's wonderful now is that, yes, we were honoring people with, you know, idiosyncrasies. Yes. But now it's 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 just part of the everyday uh, service that a mm -hmm. restaurant gives. It's there in printed in the menu. People are constantly um, being very caring and generous about people who have some sort of exactly. requirement. 
And so it's it's a completely different world. It's a very exciting world now. It's yes. so, so much fun. Yeah. So after that, I went into um, real estate and was selling um, restaurants. But, you know, it was a kind of a sad thing because restaurants are so challenging that uh, they oftentimes didn't work out and so it was such a sad thing for me to see people getting into a business that maybe they weren't completely prepared for so I went into selling residential real estate and um, I truly appreciated when I would run across a well-designed kitchen because in homes there's there's a lot that that uh, people don't take into consideration so in your home my home uh, I believe in one dance step. So, like to the sink is one step, and to the refrigerator is one step, and to the stove is one step, so that you're able to yes. coordinate everything very easily. So you redesigned your oh, kitchen yes. beautifully. Oh, I thank was always you. impressed <laughs> with it. It was fun and interesting, and it works. It uh, works, and it's meant for for one person. But people who know how to work in a kitchen, they know how to work side by side. I've had as many as three or four people working side by side with me and my husband. It's going, how do you fit in there? <laughs> well, we just all work tight. You know, you know how to chop. You know, without having to. You know, get, get your elbows out. Elbows in. <laughs> uh, being in the arts growing up, you. I was wanting to put everything, spread it out, and see what inspires me. In a real kitchen, real estate is very small. That, and I've always wanted to grow up to be like <laughs> a real chef that only messes up. <laughs> a few feet at a time, and then it's swept away. Oh, and, absolutely. You know, I try my best, but um, <laughs> so I appreciate what you're saying. So, so mm. um, because my family still owned the property on Fisherman's Wharf, which uh -huh. had been Neptune's Table, and as you said, it's now Scales, um, I became more and more over the years involved with Fisherman's Wharf, was on the board of directors, and then became president for many years. And thankfully, right now, I am immediate past president, which gives me about 50% of the responsibilities that I had. Um, and, uh, and so now, uh, the fun side of working with the Fisherman's Wharf Association is we get to plan events. And so um, we've got a birthday party coming up uh, October 15th, and then we'll have Christmas, and then we'll have the Whale Fest, and we'll have many other events after that. But for the, for the birthday, because it's you have birthday cake, the, um, in which we will have a birthday cake, which yes. we'll have... Um, I have to say that gorgeous whales jumping out of the cake, oh, but you won't be able to see that much after we chop it up. <laughs> but um, all the restaurants do some sort of fish cake, crab cake, shrimp cake, shrimp and crab, oh, and oh, so they so all like have. Everybody has cakes, little cakes. So, oh, so fab fun fish cake! Oh, fish how cake! So clever! How so everybody clever. on the wharf. So you're talking about food. So, okay, what's your special going to be this time around? And then at Christmas time, it's the same thing all over again. Oh, by the way, I'm going to go back to birthday for a second. Yeah. We're, we're going to um, invite people to share their family histories, and so we're going to celebrate oh, some work forward. And every year we'll we'll celebrate. Um, the families who've been responsible for making the wharf what it is. So we can start out, say, with the Ferrantes, who Peter mm -hmm. Ferranti and the fishing boat, and, and um, uh, uh, Ernst uh, Dolter, who was the first person to serve abalone, other than the way that the Japanese had had it, which was they had lined Fisherman's Wharf up with dried abalone, shipped it back to Japan. And then he started to prepare it like Wiener Schnitzel. When the Italians came along, then they prepared it like veal parmesan. And so that's how, for the most part, you would find abalone today. Of course, pounded a lot. Yes. yes. And um, and so anyway, after uh, and then at Christmas, we've got all sorts of fun things happening uh, with Santa Claus and cookies and chocolate and hot chocolate. And mm -hmm. and apple cider and um and it's what part of the tour of Christmas in the Adobes. We'll have lots of singing. Oh, I forgot. Back to ab 
back to the birthday. <laughs> birthday We've got birthday. Anthony Lane is going to be the uh, the band, and we'll have um, uh, Dave Marzetti will be the MC. So we'll be very very lively, and then. Um, Moving on to Whale Fest. Whale Fest. Yes, whale I was going to say we don't want to leave yeah, that out. No, but, absolutely. But so Whale Fest, we're into our eighth year. It draws between twelve and 15,000 people over uh, a two-day period. We draw people from as far away as, um, as New York and Vermont. We've had uh, people come specifically for a symposium, thanks to AMP, which films our symposium, puts it on YouTube, and then we have these fabulous uh, lectures that are shown to over 400 institutions around the country, or actually around the world. And so these um, uh, lectures are, uh, the lecturers are from the 18 research institutes that we have around Monterey Bay. So we don't need to leave our area to bring in incredibly world famous scientists and then incredibly they're not world famous, but experts in their fields. And so uh, we call it Whale Fest because the whale is the biggest thing there is, and therefore it's a wonderful umbrella to in incorporate everything. So we and is it centered around the wharf or different? Yes, all around oh, the wharf. Okay. Um, and this year the symposium will be um, at the... Uh, we're working to have it at a different location at the Wharf Theater, so it's more central on the wharf. We have over 30 different um, booths that have interactive activities, and that's our requirement, is that it has to be something really dynamic. It's not, uh, you hand out a brochure and all of a sudden nobody's going to come and see you, because that's not what it's all about. We have uh, Marine Life Studies brings their wet team, whale entanglement team, and they have the tools that show how to disengage a, a whale, and you have to be very careful. Uh, we have a fellow who brings his gas to um, f uh, f plastic to fuel machine, wow. oh um, and uh, Hopkins brings um, a, a Humboldt squid, which is about this big, and it, they show how the eye of the Humboldt is. Um, it's, it's like the human eye, wow. and we have oh my God. all these we different... We have to come. We have to come, yeah. And what, with you, there is so much more. I hope you're going to return, and we get to continue Absolutely. the rest of your to, life. The rest to, of <laughs> your life. <laughs> we have to talk about abalone races. Yes, and you have a wonderful husband who is a piano fabulous player and tuner and an incredible son that we were lucky enough to have on. Thank you so oh, much. Thank and you, Wendy. Anyway, until next time. You bet. All right. Looking forward to next time. <laughs>